Good morning, everybody. Today, we are going inshore saltwater fishing, and I'm excited because we are targeting a delicious shark. Yeah, we haven't done this in a long time. We're gonna have a shark for dinner tonight. And uh, we went fishing the other day, and a ton of sharks all over, so super excited. It's gonna be real successful. Let's go. Let's go. All right, guys, first stop. Tide just started moving. We're gonna try and catch some fresh bait. We got some ladyfish in the well, frozen. But uh, it's Captain Marciano from Wicked Tuna always says. Fresh bait and sharp hooks. Something every, every fisherman can take advantage of. Water temp is 71 degrees. It's a beautiful Valentine's Day, actually. Darcy still hasn't gotten me anything. It's nine o'clock in the morning. Did you get me anything? Oh, we don't know. It's a long day. We don't know if we got you anything. Huh. Same for you then. <laughs> what? I said, huh, same for you then. <laughs> I get my present at night. <laughs> uh, no fish here. What? Get a DOA on. <laughs> you think that'd make it better? Yeah, because it's small bait, and you know the last time we were in here, there's minnows everywhere. Oh, that's smart. Is there any DOAs around? Nope. <gasps> Shit! Jeez. What the, f what the f I didn't see. I didn't realize you had it on the side. I thought it was laying right here, and I just moved the rod tip. I didn't even <laughs> see it. I'm so sorry. It's no big deal, but. Jesus, why would you put it there? I know, that's a bad idea too, where you like, don't have to like, just go like that. It's I ridiculous. just saw the rod tip. I just oh, like, sure. gently like, I mean, great way to start the morning with the most expensive reel. Gone. All right, disaster averted. <laughs> About five minutes. What the heck? And Darcy's. And uh, I put I put the rod on the side of the boat. I wasn't paying attention. And I should it's kind of like a precarious place. I shouldn't have put it there, honestly. But then Darcy like pushed it for, for no good reason I just either. Pushed the tip a little bit. It fell <laughs> right Stella, in. Stella, freaking Stella falls in the water. I was trying to get into a compartment. <laughs> I, I put it down like this. That, don't do that, people. I put it down like this, which is retarded. Retarded. Well, I'm sorry, my language. Retarded. And then Darcy just moved the tip over so she'd open the hatch and the whole thing went in the water. Yeah. All right, catch a fish now. All right, time to fish. <laughs> Ooh, what I just had a nice bite too. All right. Oh, he's off. There's a little school of jacks right here. I just had got what? Is that jacks or ladyfish? Oh, well, that might have been a lady. No, I mean, um, darting. I mean the uh, other things. <laughs> the other things, the moonfish. Was that moonfish? No, right? Mm. Come on, eat it. Oh, there we go. Get him. Nice moonfish. It is right. a moonfish, I told you. You're right. There we go. I told you it was a moon. All right, guys. I'm going to throw this guy back, but this is a moonfish. It's technically a look down. We call it a moonfish around here because it looks like a moon. Let me just put this open so I can see, make sure you're seeing it good. Here you go. Maybe you've seen these before. Ooh, I got one. Nice sizzle. Skinniest fish in the whole world. Delicious. Oh, no, I don't. I got a snapper. <laughs> she got a little snapper. So part of the Jack family. And uh, so just a testament, you got to throw different things out here. So I was throwing a, a, a jerk bait, or I guess a crank bait, a lip diver from Missouri. Then I started throwing this DOA Terrorize. Mine's like, there's no fish here. I'm going to try getting, that. I started getting bites right away. And Darcy's using shrimp on a jig. So uh, with these things, uh, you know, slower is better. So we're going to cast that. Let it sink. Let it sink. Take your time. This this particular bait and a lot of baits, of course. You let it. And you just do a. We do a. Call it a jerk, jerk pause. Jerk, jerk. Tiny jerk. You're gonna hit the hits. You're gonna get the hits on the on the way down typically. And you see those fish are not that that those fish right here. That little school's not that big, so I was getting a little taps. So it was good. And we just got back from the. George Poveromo seminar series, didn't we sizzle? Mm-hmm. What's something we learned, something good we learned there? We learned a lot of good things. Yeah, it was great. Whoa, there's about, a fish! Talk about the DOA. Oh, I lost them, I lost them. Yeah. Yeah, they're not DOA terrorized that look like much, but even they were even talking about it at the, at the seminar, that it's just a great little bait made by a company here in Stewart. Uh, it just works really well around here. I don't know where else it works, but I'm sure. 
Anyway, and one of the, one of the big things was justify with Dar Darcy always uses a loop knot on everything. Yeah. And there was one of the well-known captain there who said he uses a loop knot on everything. <laughs> so I think personal preference a lot, but yeah, well, like even offshore when you catch like target mutton snappers, like Miami Mutt Man, he ties a loop knot. Yeah, everybody ties a loop knot. Yeah, Miami, Miami, Miami Mutt Man knows what he's doing, so if he's doing it, then you should probably do it yeah. too. And the other huge takeaway we got was the uh, you know these seminars, you know, you think you know everything, but you don't, of course, and you can always learn something. So even one little tip, if it can turn your day from Lemons to lemonade, you're gonna you're making your money back. I mean, with gas and everything these days, and bait and time. But uh, anyway, so we had gone fishing one night on a full moon for snapper fishing in the summer when it's like you're supposed to catch all the yellowtails and mangroves in the world, right? Right out here in Boynton, and we caught nothing. Not even a blue runner, I don't think. The nothing. bite was dead, and we're out there for hours. Not like a red toro or whatever you yeah, call it, but like I don't nothing. even count that. What kind of charm the whole deal? Conditions look great. Everything was awesome. No fish. No, not a fish. But then uh, George Poveromo told a story. We had a similar situation. Loaded to the, to the bees uh, out in the Gulf on a great spot, you know, filming a show. He only goes with the best captains and the best spots to make, you know, to make money, his job. And they were getting no bites, zero. They, you know, again, he knows what he's doing. He's with a professional captain. All the chum in the world, best baits, everything else. He's not getting a bite. No fish, zero. Full moon. And then the moon set. So you can look on your apps and whatever else, Noah. And there's a, there's a time that the moon rises, just like the sun, and the moon sets. And as soon as that moon set, the bite was on fire. And uh, then we looked up in the almanac and went backwards. And we were not there during the moon set. The moon set was like in the morning like right. 5 a.m. or something. And we had left at like 2, because we were over it. So uh, I remember that night, the moon was so full. It was out all night. Yeah. So we are personally not going to go fishing at night anymore unless the moon is setting. <laughs> so, because I was very disappointed, because they were trying to get me to do it forever. Anyway, that's the other takeaway. Brian's like, I'm never doing this again. Never doing this again. Yeah, I bought lights. And we bought chum and, you know, we don't do it a lot and whatever. Anyway, there's a tip. Can you catch me a fish? Woo! Oh, that was quick. I got him now. What do you got, Jack? I don't know. If that's a moonfish, it's a monster. Look at Sizzle. What do I got? You better stay on. Shush, don't talk like that. Got a wake coming by. Woo! Nice one. That is a nice one. Awesome. Thought it might be something different. You put up a nice little fight on that light tackle. Woo! Come on. You're in everyone's way today. I am not. I'm way up front. <laughs> so we got two videos today already. Brian throws a $1,000 reel into the ocean <laughs> or Darcy sword fights with Pudding. <laughs> Valentine's Day. What's Pudding going to get for Valentine's Day, you guys? What do you think? Don't dudes always want the same thing on the birthday of Valentine's Day? Oh my God. I'm just saying, I mean, uh, right? The girl wants like flowers and roses in like a pocketbook. Ah! And the dude just wants a little extra, right? Am I wrong? There so, he is. So ridiculous. Show them the fish. Oh, come in. Want me to get over there so you're lazy? No. Nice fish. There he is. Pull them sideways. Throw That's, him in the back. Yeah, let's get him in the back. Right? Nice. Yeah, we're gonna keep him. We want lady fish though. Yeah, we're gonna, there's no lady fish here. We're gonna move. Cast over here. I will. With your DOA. All right. There's a little one, that's perfect. Little guy. All right. All right, nice to bend a few rods at the first location. And we see the tide is coming in and there's a nice color change up here. We're gonna head over there and throw some casts first. All right, I don't know if you guys can see this line without your polarized or sizzle or Revo sunglasses. But uh, there's a nice little line right here. And, so I'm just gonna try it out. We gotta get the shark fishing real quick. No. I'm on love right here. Let's get out of here. All right, let's move. All right. <laughs> Didn't love that area. We're just gonna move on to our shark fishing. Yes. Which actually does sizzle. What? This reminds me, we should talk, we can talk about our land shark giveaway today. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we got a big giveaway. Going to Belize. Woo woo. And you can go too. So we'll tell you about it later. 
tell you how to enter. Go put the thing up, Sizzle. Sorry. She's on vacation because she thinks I'm it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> Valentine's, Valentine's Day doesn't mean you get to take day off. All right, we've got our two rigs, our two rods ready, ready to go here. We're using a Miami Mutton Man custom spinning rod here. We love this thing. This one is rigged with a wire trace. What size wire is that? Probably I don't know. Eight. We don't use too much for these black tips. Yeah, and then uh, so we expect to catch. I'm sorry. Yeah, and a lot of these smaller sharks are pretty wire sensitive. So we do have one with wire, and you can see our heavy duty. Uh, Swivel. <laughs> Swivel right there, sorry. Brain fart. <laughs> and then rig to our probably 50 pound shock leader here, a fluorocarbon. And then on the other side, I'm gonna rig this one and send it out now. On the other side, we've got our Cabo, which is awesome, 8,000, paired yeah. with a star rod. We love this setup, and we use this for the heavy gear for tarpon and sharks. You can see our three times strong circle hook and tied with uni knot to straight Mono leader, I would say that's probably 100 pound. Yeah, something like that. About 100 pound. One of them probably go a little thicker than that, so they yeah. can't chew through it. Right. But we'll see what happens. I mean, there's no size limit on shark on black tip sharks, so if it's a smaller fish, he might not even chew through that at all. So we just we're gonna throw it out and see what happens. Right. I just want to say that you know these these are kind of like the rigs that I had in my box. So like I'm gonna mix some different rigs up, but usually we like to use 200. Uh, pound mono for these smaller sharks because again they are they are actually uh, wire shy. They and if really you have a circle are. hook, you know they won't they won't really bite through that. And hopefully you get a good hook set. Um, and it just depends. So we usually for black tip fishing we usually use heavy mono. Yeah. Alrighty. And now I'm gonna cut our piece of bait. We were out here the other day and had a shark eat a lady almost eat a ladyfish this size right at the boat. Do you want to use a head? No, right? No. Nah. Okay. I'll cut the head right off. Then I'll probably use a section like this. He's very soft. Good. All right, something like that. And now what I'm gonna do is the spine bone is up here at the top. So I'm gonna make sure to go around that bone so they can't pull it off easy, but also make sure that tip is exposed. You don't like so, to go through the belly? Usually the belly is tougher. I, I usually go through the belly. Oh. Oh, whatever works. I just want to round that spine bone. Yeah, that's a good so idea too. In place All right, we'll too. see how it goes. But put it on the corner like that, and then that way your a hook point is exposed, and when the fish picks it up, you know that circle hook will come tight in the corner of the mouth. Yeah, that's the important part. You gotta have that hook exposed. Yeah. We got a current. I think is the wind is going this way. You can go up front so you have plenty of space. Oh, I'm good back here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm good back here. Not bad. It's not that much weight, so it's kind of difficult yeah, it's to like, the, it's whip got, it. This is like our tarpa rod. I don't think we've re-rigged it since the Keys last May. Yeah. And so it's got like a 20-foot leader on it, so it gets all screwed up through the guides. Yes. <laughs> Good cast enough. It's, it's out, now soaking. Those sharks, they can supposedly smell a drop of blood in the water within a mile radius. So if they're hungry, they're going to come right over here and eat it. Yeah. How are you going to set the drag? Super light drag. Lighter the better, at least for the initial pickup and uh, of them eating the bait. What's going on with that? Okay, super light, like to the point where I'm just barely, yeah, like just barely anything there. It's very, very light so they can just pick it up and run and then we can tighten it down. Let's use a piece of fresh jack on the other one. So we're we totally have- We're totally against jacks at the house. I know it was fresh and so we're gonna have two different baits out so we try different things. All right. All right, let's do it. What's fresh? My big thing lately is but you gotta be ready to fish when you throw your first line out. I mean, ready to catch a fish. So to me, a lot of times that means the cameras, but also uh, important shark stuff. Got our bolt cutters, in case we gotta cut a hook in half. Got our gloves. Of course, we're gonna be keeping a fish. So we got a gaff, in case we have to gaff the fish. And now, part of this, part of the reason we do this every year or two is uh, to make sure, to, just, just to let you guys know about some of the regulations and stuff about sharks, and that sharks, it's a fish, okay? Due to Shark Week, everyone just thinks every shark in the world is an endangered great white shark or a hammerhead, and, but there's plenty of sharks that you can eat and, uh, and have a lot of fun catching. And you just gotta check your regulations, of course. Black tip, there's no size limit down here. I think we only keep one, which is all we want. Yeah. And then I'm gonna show you how to, how we like to cook them, you know, so it's gonna be great. So it's, you know, just another fish you can add to your repertoire and everyone loves to catch sharks, it's fun. I mean, you know, 
And there's some fishermen out there that just want to eat a shark every day. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there are. And uh, you know, and for the beach picture in Florida, from the beach, you need your beach fishing permit, shark beach, land-based shark beach fishing permit, whatever it's called. Make sure you get that. We consider that our tarpon hook, very light wire. Our tarpon hook is a VMC 80 circle. Fair enough. Yeah. All right, we're fishing. There he is. All right, that was fast. <laughs> Instant. <laughs> that was like five minutes. I was like rigging up. He's going by that freaking trap. Tighten it up. There he is, he's right at the trap. Shoot, he's got the trap. He's got the trap. Oh my God, he's got the trap. Shark, he's off. That was a big shark, dude. All right, it's just beginning. He was on that trap, broke us right off. That was a big shark. Yeah. Did you see him? He was a good size. He aired out, five yeah. foot at least. Yeah, I don't, know if, I don't know if I got it on the camera, but. Uh, wow. Yeah, all right, you gotta take that drag faster. I know, and that's the jack, fresh jack. Nothing on there. There goes again. Like the, they bend it over and stop. Come on. There he is. <laughs> All right, light drag. Tighten it up. He's coming this way. Swimming at me a little bit. What the hell? He's off. Nope, nope, nope. I'm wrong. He's doing all these weird darts. All right, let's see what we got here. Woo! Jeez. I can't even tie a leader before you get a fish on. Is he off? Oh my God, he's off. Really? Yeah. Oh. It's not big. That was definitely a shark. Wasn't a jack? The way he was fighting was like that other shark. He was oh. doing those weird darts and he just darted back at me a couple times and I thought it went slack. Well, it did go slack. I thought he was gone. Hey, it's too big. Pieces it's might a little be too shark. Big. Pieces might Look be too big. Look at the little tiny teeth marks. Where? Oh yeah. Right there. All right. You think that piece is too big? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. That's little, man. You want the if you want, you want to go littler, then the catfish will eat it. Well, catfish can eat it anyway. We're only getting bites on the jack. Yeah, well, this one might be out of the, in a bad spot. All right, so we recast both of them. Yeah. I don't want I don't want to mess with it yet. All right. They're gonna have to eat it longer. I mean, whatever that was, it was a little shark. All right. There's little little teeth marks all over it. Yeah. All right. Get back out, getting right. a lot of bites, getting a lot of bites. All right, I'm letting Brian cast <laughs> with my broken finger. All right, a lot of activity. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of activity. I'm trying to tie rigs and I can't Woo! even, <laughs> she almost fell over. And I can't even tie a rig without a line going off yet. Or yeah. something happening. Brian's all confused. I made two, and every time I put a rig down, everything goes all messed up. Anyway, all right, catch a fish. You can see the bottom, it's getting clear. Yeah. Beautiful day. This one's going. All right, hold on. Let him eat it. Two seconds. Let him eat it. I am. He's taking it. He's taking it. Oh, the other one. Oh shoot, it's on that line. Come on. We're wrapped. Shoot, it's wrapped. You're just wrapping it. It's, no, it's wrapped. All right, hold on. Got it. Got it. Got it. Take that. Is there a fish on this or no? There's, I don't know. I was letting him feeding it to him. Bail's open. Got it close. Is he on? Come on, eat it. I think this is a big jack. Nothing on this. Oh, now it is. There you are. There you are. Oh, he's off. Oh, oh man. I cut it. I have this one open again. Stop running with it. You think ladyfish are picking them up? I don't know. This one has like bite marks on it. Oh yeah, it's chewed. Those are jack marks. It's chewed. No. That's, that's a, a jack a bite. That's a big slice in the back. A jack bite. Look at here. This right here is a jack bite. Or a bluefish. Oh. 
You see it? Mm-hmm. That's a good size bait now. It's like a bluefish or a jack bite. Well, those sharks are chasing. The reason we're here because these jacks. There's a lot of we caught a bunch of ladyfish here the other day, and there were among the sharks around them. So the, dropping them. the sharks are, are chasing the ladyfish, and there's been a lot of bluefish around. Of course, they eat bluefish too. So seems to be a lot of other predators around here. Well, how are we gonna weed them out? Oh my we'll god! Weed them out right now. Doubled back. Oh, fish on! Jesus. Eat it, he dropped it. Oh my God. You find the hook up? Whoa, big splash, big jump. I might be a blue. Really? Look, right here. Big splash. Yeah, I'm hooked up for now. Oh my God. It's it's a shark! Nice shark! Nice shark spinning all over the place. He's coming back this way towards the back of the boat. He just did a nice spin. Yeah! Hooked right, up. Finally hooked up. <laughs> the other one might go off. Watch him jump. He might jump. For once, he's cooperating right now. It's a nice shark, four footer. Okay. Come on, buddy. Gotta follow your fish. You're getting closer and closer. We're gonna find out what it is as well because there are size limits between black tip and spinner sharks. And they look fairly similar to each other in the water. But there is also a rule that if you don't know, let it go. No, so if right. you can't figure out what species it is, you're going to let that shark go. You're not going to, you know, mess around with it. Um, I, these days I can tell the difference. I'm going to need you to pick that up when he goes under. Whoa, might need to reel that up. Okay, that's a good idea. Get it up now. There you go. All right. There's my bait, the piece of jack. Ooh. You're getting real close now. Don't see leader yet. But he's 20 feet, 30 feet behind the boat. All right. Slowly but surely, bringing them in. They do tire out. And these black tips and spinners, you know, they don't get much bigger than about five feet long. Both of them, they're a smaller shark species. I know five foot, it's pretty big still, but in the grand scheme of things, like bull sharks and hammerheads, <laughs> they're little babies. Bull sharks and hammerheads actually target them and eat them. That might, yeah, their leader's right there. Yeah, your bait is stuck on that leader. Yeah, leader's right there, there he is, I see him. Color, color. Nice one. Nice one. Now you gotta see what it is. Looks like a it's black tip. It's a black tip. I'm pretty sure. Let me see that back anal fin. If it's clear, it's a black tip. Oh, you didn't let me see it. I'm pretty sure it's a black tip. Now, the difference, it's oddly enough, the difference between a black tip and a spinner, they both have black tips on their fins, but the black tip does not. So you gotta follow your fish. The black tip does not have a black tip on the anal fin, so it's a little counterintuitive. Come on. Yep, black tip. 100%. Black anal fin, so tell him the difference. I just did. Them. What were you? Oh, I thought you said the battery died. That's a nice four footer. Yeah, it's a good size. He's gonna do a weird dart right now, I know it. He's going this way. He's tired. How's he hooked? I'm trying to look right now, actually. First, I was looking at the target, I, the species, so yeah. we gotta let them go or not. So, no size limits on black tip sharks. You're allowed one per angler or one per boat, I believe. But you guys look up those regulations. Spinners, there is a size limit. They have to be 30, 54 to the fork. 
So yes. my first thing was looking at the species. This is species we want to eat. And now let's see how he's hooked. If he's hooked good, we're going to let him tire out in the water. Right. If not hooked good, we're going to gaff him, get him in the boat, and make right. a big mess. Exactly. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. He's good. You got Oh, him. he's hooked perfect. Perfect. All right, all right, all right. right in the corner of the mouth. Right there. Watch. When I start to lay up like that. He's hooked perfect. You want to, if you got to release him, release him quick, because that's starting to get real tired and you're going to die. Right. He's done. Yeah. Let's give him a sec. He's gonna go crazy in the boat anyway, but whatever. I know. How's that mommy mutton right. man rod? Do you want to pick up that bag or anything up front before he gets slapped on the deck? Well, I like this rod, it's awesome. Yeah. Not just, uh, we got a sour go at 6,000 on that rod, which is perfectly fine again for these little sharks. Oh, he wants to, oh God. <laughs> Bringing these aggressive fish on, on the boat is very, uh, Dangerous, make sure you're wearing your boots if you want to harvest a shark. And uh, bringing them on this flats boat, we just cleared that area so we can uh, get them up. And again, having Brian doing the heavy lifting today, don't want to really ruin my finger anymore. Still healing. Something's done. Oh shit. Keep her up the chilling motor. She's done. What do you think? Whatever you think. Let's see if she takes some Brian line right now. You keep her up here? She's done. All right. All right, you want to go to the picker with just that leader? What do you think? I would get the gaff, babe. Get the gaff? I mean, the leader's a bad idea. You're just going to break her off. She's at least 30 pounds. Yeah, then she's going to go crazy. Well, what do you want to do? Try the leader first? Hold on, I uh, need to back up. On here? What? You yeah, so you didn't get hurt. All right, what do you want to do? You'd rather leader it instead of gaffing it? I guess I could gaff her good in the gill. She's going to move around so slow. You tell me. Oh! All right, hold on, you hold think on. I could do better than that? Hold on. That's the problem with gaffing them. They go crazy. Lift. I am. I'm holding. Good job. Yeah, right in the mouth. Good job. Get her on the floor. Woo! Talking about. All right. Nice job. Get her tail in the boat. I can't even want to ruin my out. boat with this gaff either. Don't let her flip right All back right, out. We're good, we're good. She got this in her mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Rip that off. Woo! Nice one. Get that rod. Rod's good. Nice fish, guys. Look at that. Woo! That's a nice fish. Yeah. That's over. I don't know. It's going to be close to five foot. Eh, four. Beauty. We did it. We did it. We got our shark catching cook. Awesome. All right, look at this. A little remora. Oh, nice. I'm gonna bang up bang my bad finger. Hold on. The symbiotic relationship with the little remoras. She was hanging on to that shark the entire time. Let's let it go. See the little sucker on the top? All right. Cool. All righty. We're gonna let the shark chill for just a minute, but we need to get right to work on the harvesting process of this shark. Um, I'm going to show you too the tail. I'm just sure the second I touch it, it's going to freak out. Also, these marks on the back are mating marks. Woo! You can see all those rough marks. That's from mating. So that's just normal part of the process. They all kind of look beat up like that. But the female black tip, she's got black tips everywhere except that last fin. And that would make it a spinner shark if it was black. Yeah. We'll get better. We'll get, when she's up on bow, we'll get a better picture or whatever. Yeah. All right, guys, we got a couple of pictures real quick. We got, you got to process these sharks right away. This is all part of the process we're teaching you today. Ugh. Ugh. This is not a little shark. No, dude. You want to bleed these when you're alive. Now, fish, I mean, sharks, you can look all this up, but they create urea through their skin when they're dying. And so you got to gut them and you're going to cut the tail. Darcy's pretty good at this. Uh, she's going to take over. <laughs> I'm going to try my best. My finger is not in the best cutting shape, and these fish are a little, a little tough to cut, but we're gonna do my best. Let's see what we can do here. Gotta get her in the back. Oh, she's done. Okay. Yeah, she's gonna cut Damn it. Okay. All right, no, first we gotta gut it. Yeah, first you're gonna gut it. All right, so I just made a cut right here, and basically all the way 
to the back to the anal fin here. This is a female. She does not have any claspers here. And we've, all right, there's all her guts. And then you could also cut the tail back here too. I don't know how much this is gonna do right it's now. It's gonna circle it. Yeah. Don't cut it off. Right, I don't know how, oh, there it goes. Just circle it and leave the bone in the middle. Correct, yeah. you do not want to mutilate your fish, which means taking the tail off is illegal, at least until you get back to the dock. So you leave the tail on, just do a circle around the cartilage bone. And if you guys know, a lot of sharks don't have any bones other than just their jaw and their teeth. There we go. All right, so she's dripping out blood right there to the tail. And now we're gonna get our hands dirty. Do I gotta do this because you glove? I think you need to do this. Oh no. Dude, I don't need, I don't think I need shark guts in my No, skin. you're right, all right, move. Get I'm out of the way. All right, your gloves are right here, switch. This. I'm, I'm not sure Guys, I'm doing the right thing here. Should I use my gloves? Do I need gloves? G yeah, whatever, it's warm in there. So just or start, right. whatever. If Move you got here. cuts in your hand, put gloves on. And you're gonna have to cut the sections off on both sides. Yeah. I, I don't need the, these gloves. Then they leave them off. We're going in. Go. You're gonna have to cut with that knife. Yeah, it's okay. I got the stomach there a little bit. Yeah, I'm not I see that the good. Stomach. Yeah, I'm not that good at this, of course. We're both not that good. <laughs> yeah, but you're just gonna we don't dive get that in, many man. sharks. Like we said, guys, we you know, we rarely get keep one shark a year. We haven't done this in about two years now, so. That's the liver, right? I'm sure. Cut it, take it out of the boat. Stop keeping it in. You can't get it loose. Throw it. All right. Yeah. What happened? It mostly went over. There we go. All right, that's the stomach. Whoa, the tail just broke. Right. Well, I was gonna dip it over the over the oh, side, but no. the tail broke. All right. Uh, hold on. Let's... All right. Whew. Now it's time to pack the belly with ice and get her in the Smith fish bag. Yeah. All right, another great, as I was just saying, Smith has a lot of great products besides Darcel's best knives in the whole world. We got these great fish bags. We've been using these for years and they're great. Darcy actually helped design them and uh, product test them on the water for like a year before they let them go for you, you know, put them on the website. All right, see if you can get her like, like half sideways so we can pack the belly. There you go, strong Open that more. His workouts are working. Yeah. Oh no, there you go, there you go, All right. there you go, there you go. Whew. She's in. Oh, got my exercise again today. Right. You don't do it. I, I, I mean, you can dump it out into there or just screw it, just lay it. I'll just lay it on top, whatever. I think. All right, screw it. Gonna miss her. Whatever. All, All right. right, screw it. Well, maybe I should I'll have brought it. that small bag. So maybe I'll just, I think laying a flat might be better like this. And then these will go like this. All right. Yeah. We can get a home right away anyway. Nice job. Woo. Zip it up. This is like the sizzle work. I feel like I'm at work. Zip it up. Ew. Ew. I know I'm over coaching. I don't care. <laughs> Woo. All nice right. Job. Time to go clean her. Time to go finish her up. All right, got the shark out of the bag. I gotta get him to the table and get him really sc uh, sprayed off because the top layer of skin starts to peel off of them after, shortly after they've died. Um, and he only died a couple hours ago since we've been home, but I need to quickly spray this thing down and get him to the table. I got a glove on my hand too, just to be safe. I would be just be manhandling these things, but I'm just trying to take it easy. Oh, there's the hook, okay. All right. Uh, super rough skin. You gotta clean the cavity out real quick. There's definitely blood all over the place. Watch out. All right, so first things first with sharks, you want a very sharp knife. We talk about sharp knives all the time. Um, so my dark sizzle fillet knife that you guys usually see when I fillet fish 
is not recommended by me to use <laughs> because it's very bendable and flexible. And with these sharks, they're very tough. So this is a uh, super sturdy, thick knife that does not bend. This is a boning knife, nine inch boning knife by Smith, which is, I love to use for all different kinds of things. When I make strips and stuff like that, I like a nice firm knife. Um, so first things first, we are gonna do two different ways of filleting the fish. We're gonna do shark steaks and we're gonna do fillets. So we're gonna have two different versions to eat. I'm very excited. We've never done shark, um, we've never done shark steaks before, so I'm excited to do that. Knocking out the fins, get these awkward fins out of the way so I can actually properly fillet this fish. You're gonna make shark fin soup one day. People always say that. Dude, I know. I think it's a very long process. I know I looked into it a little yeah, bit. Maybe next time. But it's like a very long process. Like you dry out. I don't know how to do it easier because I like, think you let it dry out in the sun. It's like a whole thing. The head is still intact. I would take that off too, but since it's kind of one long tube now or shark, uh, I don't even know what you call it, <laughs> shark piece, it's going to be easy to make the cuts for the steaks. So I think I'm just going to start right here. Start cutting down all the way through. I should be able to get through this cartilage, but you gotta give it definitely force. It's very hard. All right, so you can see their spine, that's cartilage. Um, it just popped when I turned it to the side a little bit like that. So let's see if we can get another piece off, but do it nice starting and clean. right here. Yeah, try to do it nice and clean. I am trying, it's I know. very hard. Maybe to, to push your hands on, down on a bone. Like we've never done it, make it thinner. That's yeah. not an inch. Well, what, okay. yes it is. Okay. I think it's five inches. <laughs> they are incredibly tough fish. You need a cleaver. Yeah. There's one. Let me try one. Yeah, I don't like the, I don't like all that red around that skin yeah, too much. Yeah, remember you got to cut it off. Do you? It's a very thick bloodline. Mm-hmm all the way down the skin. Very thick. Hmm. What do you think? You got it. Good job. The bottom skin is just as tough as the, it's tougher than the oh, top. Oh yeah. Mhm. Mm All, right. All right. Now we got two thin ones. We're gonna try. All right. So this is not the prettiest fillet job, as you guys can see. We're gonna do our very best. Don't get to fillet sharks that often. So uh, now I'm just gonna. Make the cuts like I would for any other fish here since we have our shark plug, I guess you could say. Yeah, that's what it is. Shark um, plug. Yeah. And well, so you felt like that's how far back the head goes? Yeah, way right back here. There's a huge cartilage thing right here. Feel All right. it? I believe it. It's very you can't cut up into here. But you see how much like how much of this fish is mostly like just head. Like yes, okay. All right. No, feel right here. I can't cut that. Yeah, yeah. You Maybe. can't cut this is the gills. Alright. Cannot cut there. Try to bring it back down the back. Oh, and you just gotta give it a lot of force. Use your muscle. And I'm wearing my shark pendant to match the sharks today. Have different chains available on the website. Unisex pendant for guys and girls alike. Whew, my muscles are getting tired. <laughs> my arm. Really using my muscles. The cool thing about sharks, I think we said this before, but they are basically all cartilage, and this middle spine bone is a is cartilage. That's not true bone. The only true bone in a shark is the jaws and the teeth. So it's a fish, but it's like not a fish because <laughs> fish have bones. Look at that. Looks great though. Yeah. Staking it was the hardest thing of them all. Yeah. All right, we make some nice fillets out of that. Look at that. Beautiful. 
That doesn't look too bad. That looks like any normal fish would. No. That's the belly. Yeah. All right, um, so now, let's go ahead and whack out this belly. I'm sure people could eat this. Yeah. You have to skin the belly meat, the belly lining off, yeah, and the skin on the bottom. All right, All right guys, I want to mention that we're going we're gonna to cook some up, but we're also giving a bunch to our neighbors. Our neighbors Correct. here, and we called uh, John up the street, we called the AC guy, called the handyman. Yep. And, uh, not going to waste. No, so not going to waste it, okay? Okie dokie. So, I am just going to like make a cut right here. Just like I'd handle like any big kingfish or wahoo. It's going to make it much easier to do the skinning process. But you can see that the sharks hold most of their blood, or yeah, a lot of their blood right on their skin line. You see those two different loins right there? Yeah. And you remove as much of that red stuff as you possibly can. I mean, we say that all the time, but it's very imperative with sharks too. All right, so I'm gonna get my other knife. Yeah. So you gotta make sure you keep that knife up. Because again, that blue line is pretty thick. Yeah, the meat is dense too. It's not like a mahi, you know, it's like a dense. Oh no, even like worse than cobia. Yeah, it's like a dense, thick meat. All right, so even before it goes into the bag, you inspect it, but you see how we left that on there? Yeah. So you sacrifice a little bit of meat, but left most of that bloodline right there on the skin. But even before this goes into the bag, I'm gonna quickly clean it up. I mean, this blood is very fishy. And because sharks have ammonia through their skin, you just wanna do your best to get the fishy stuff out. It's pretty good. Yeah, super dense fish. All right, but now we got a little bit of both. We got the steaks. Now we're gonna have some delicious fillets, process the rest of this fish for my neighbors, and we'll be all set. Here we go. So uh, I'm gonna probably cut that in half inside in the kitchen so it's thinner. Then we're gonna soak it in buttermilk overnight, and then we're gonna have it for dinner tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, or, and of course, in the next two seconds for you. <laughs> And uh, also, we're going to tell you shortly about, don't forget, the Land Shark giveaway, where we're giving away a trip to Belize. And Darcy's going to be there, and I'm going to be there. Pretty exciting. And it's a big event. We're giving away three grand prizes uh, for two. You and, a, you and a friend, or a spouse, or a significant other, or, or your fishing buddy, I guess. <laughs> and uh, we're going to tell you all about that in a second. All right, guys, welcome to another edition of Cooking with Puddin', your favorite part of the show. As Darcy cleaned up all nice for us, we got steaks. Let me get a little closer to the screen here. And of course, I got the fillets. Now, all I did was I, uh, I soaked them in, uh, was it buttermilk? So what was it? Not buttermilk. No, no, it wasn't half and half. It was heavy cream. And I got some B-roll here. I just covered them all up with heavy cream. And then I, actually overnight. You can do it for a couple hours, but we like to we do it overnight. And then I just I marinated it in some barbecue sauce that I have in the cupboard. Now I'm just gonna throw it on a grill and we'll see how it goes. Now, of course, fish takes about 10 minutes per inch. Oh, sounds good, sounds good. And of course, and I cut them in half so they will cook evenly. And of course, when you're thinner, they're gonna cook a little faster. And you're gonna have more surface area for more taste, okay? And hopefully that won't burn in the middle. So I'm just gonna close this up, let it sit. You're not gonna touch it. The more you touch it, just let it get a nice coating on there, let the proteins brown and get nice and so it doesn't stick to the grill too much. And then we can uh, flip it over, see how it goes. All right, it's been about five or six minutes. So we're gonna check this fish. And you can see, I added the light so you can see now, it's actually cooking pretty good. Um, and you see, I let it sit and I you can easily flip it. it. Looks great. It's not stuck to the grill. I'm a little nervous about these steaks. Oh. All right, these are gonna be done super soon. Everything's going good. All right, guys. It's been about two or three minutes actually, and I think I tested it. Looks. I cut up a little side off here. I think it's pretty much done. And uh, we're just gonna taste it for you. We're gonna taste the fillets versus the steaks. Darcy's over here in the 
ghetto garden. Looking at the garden stuff. She, she's not feeling too good, actually. I'm all right. She's going to be okay. I'll and, live. Uh, I might have got a little cold or something, but yeah, a head cold. and we're resting up. She to, she's going to be at the boat show. The Miami, you're gonna, you're it's gonna too get late. The, well, you're going to get this after the Miami boat show, but she's going to be at the Fort yeah. Lauderdale boat show and the Palm Beach boat show as well. What? Fort Lauderdale is just past November, but um, well, I'm going to be, gonna be next November. Miami, Mibs this weekend, and then the next month in March, I will be at Palm Beach, my home boat show. So you show. all can catch her at the Palm Beach one then, so. Yeah. So it's looking pretty good. That's skin is thick. I know. It doesn't really change at all. It's just kind of the same ish. Alright, so let's try it, Sizzle. Yeah. You got forks? I have two forks. Awesome. Here you go. Thank you. You got the land shark? Nice. Got the land shark out here? Alright, let's try this one. Okay. Ooh. I see some blood on top. It's juice. That's <laughs> it juice. It kind of looks like the. Yeah, it kind of looks like a. Yeah, it's, it literally looks like a, like a steak one. Did you see. So we're gonna see if the steak tastes better than the filet. Now oh, we go ahead. Sorry, and my finger is fully here. I know we keep talking about this, but I have it wrapped because uh, I still have some like deep. I definitely have some skin loss and some deeper red areas. So I was just casting in the backyard before the sunset and trying to keep the sun off it. You know, the sharks are just such a dense chewy. fish. I don't know about chewy, but oh my gosh, whoa! Now, a lot of times, you know, you leave the bone in, it's supposed to make it better and, and so, more juicy. But a lot of fish, the skin just peels right off. This no, does not. No, not this fish. This does not before. We'll have a knife, of course, which would be helpful. It's good. Not bad. It's good. I mean, there's no ammonia taste, if that's what you guys are wondering about. Right. Zero at all. Um, so that is good. I definitely had shark in the past where I could taste it and I didn't like it. Um, so I stopped eating it. But this was excellent. I think Brian soaked it long enough and then put it in that marinade and that's really good but like it is like really tough to cut through this fish this one is not this, this side this one still is still tough though like a i mean it's a dense shark breaks apart yeah well shark different. is a denser fish shark and tuna and wahoo they're all denser not as dense as shark but good i think this is good this is better oh yeah way better yeah i think leaving that skin on is not good maybe it like adds some kind of i don't know, I don't know. this is way better way better i mean they're both good but I'm going to eat this for dinner. This is way better. And you can also do the same thing with uh, Italian dressing, mm -hmm. um, which we do Italian dressing or uh, barbecue sauce on like Amber Jack the same way and shark. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess you could also blacken it, but this is how we like to do it. I'm going to have some more. No complaints there. I'm going to taste this piece. And like we said, we fed our neighbors, gave away all the shark. It's all gone and we're eating what we could eat for tonight, and that's about it, guys. Nothing goes to waste. I mean, she's eating it. I would say also we probably had like maybe close to 10 pounds of meat. It, it wasn't that much, just because you saw like how much of the head comes off and all the skin that comes off, and you lose a lot. Like you lose a lot more meat than you would think. Yeah. At least when it comes to the shark. So. Yeah. Uh, they look bigger than they actually are. There you go. All right, we only have one beer for me. Oh well. Well. I probably should skip it, and I gotta drink some water. Oh, let's put in down and below. We're giving away a land shark trip mm -hmm. to Belize. Mm -hmm. All right, three grand prize winners. Check down in the uh, description below. There'll be a link to sign up. You have to be able to travel to Belize, like May, whatever. I'll put it down below. May sixteenth, the twentieth. Uh, you gotta be, be twenty-one and older. Continental U.S. Check the rules, okay? Yeah, check the rules. Check that out. Links are gonna be down below. I'm literally gonna finish this for dinner right now. It's very good. So go out there and catch your own black tip shark. Yes. And like we said, if you don't know what it is, let it go. If you don't know, let it go. Yep. All right. Don't want to get in trouble. So thanks for watching, guys. Until our next adventure, follow your dream and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. I literally feel like I feel like I'm talking weird. Right? A little nasal. I'm a little nasally. Yeah, right? you're good. It's okay though.